so we're going to talk about enhancing investigations using LLMs, embeddings, and clusterings. Uh, I'm sure you've already heard LLMs, embeddings. I haven't heard as much about clustering, so we're going to talk about that. That might be a little bit new for you, uh, but just a ton of fun. I'm Matthew Sayer. I, a little bit about me, I'm a director at KPMG. I kind of do everything automation related to our IR investigations, uh, automating a lot of our data collection and analysis. I'm currently exploring the world of AI and ML. This is a result of that. I can't wait to show you about it. I went from nothing to something and so can you. Uh, that's what's cool about this, right? It's all brand new stuff. We're all learning together. Just play with it, be curious, go out and you know take these notebooks that you're getting and just run them. Uh, and I love coding in Rust. So a couple terms that we're gonna talk about today. Um, ETL, extract, transform, load. This is the basis of kind of what we do with data. In fact, if you're coming here and you come from that IR investigation or that digital forensics uh, investigation kind of background, you've been doing it this whole time. Think about an MFT parser. You take data, you extract it from a binary format, your MFT, right? You transform that data into a human readable format. You maybe transform some timestamps and then you load that into a CSV format or an Excel format. That's ETL. Really, if you're doing forensics and DFIR, Pretty much everything you do is ETL. You extract data from a source, you transform that data, give it context, make it meaningful, and you load it somewhere else, whether it's a spreadsheet or it's another backend system. Um, so certainly the core embedding vectors, we've talked, you've heard a little bit about this. You've heard RAG, right? This is kind of the core concept behind RAG, where you have an array of numbers that represent text. And we're gonna use that here. Um, clustering, so it's putting data together in buckets based off of similarity. And we're gonna use those vectors to do that here. Uh, principal, cons uh, principal component analysis. This is where we start getting into things, uh, into some linear algebra. We grab things called eigenvectors and eigenvalues, really fun words. I couldn't tell you what any of it means, um, not as well as sec. 595 can. So let me tell you, you should go take that class because it's mind blowing. Um, and then of course, LLMs, this is your natural language processing. It generates text for you. And we've seen that a lot in the form of chat GPT, pretty cool. All right, so what are we gonna go over today? We're gonna take a two phase approach here. Our first phase is ETL, that extraction transforming loading phase. And then we're gonna shift it over to what I call doing cool stuff. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're going to extract command lines out of event logs. We're gonna transform that data and load it into data frames. And then we're going to create embeddings for said commands. We're gonna cluster those. And then for our clusters, we're going to create assessments. So what are you gonna walk out of here with today? Well, you're gonna get a Jupyter notebook. And you're also gonna get a really cool Rust tool that allows you to run what we're talking about here on native EVTX files and get similar output. So I know you wanna know how this all benefits you, of course, right? One, never hurts to have another tool in your toolbox, right? There's a tool for everything. All of this AI ML stuff is yet another tool that we can use to efficiently analyze data. And the efficiency part is key here, right? We're going through just tons and tons of data in our investigations and how can we most efficiently find what it is that we're looking for. Um, so that kind of leads into data exploration, right? And what we're doing here is we're breaking a large amount of data into smaller groups, right? That's a strategy, the art of war. Take something, break it into small pieces and attack each small piece, right? Great strategy. So. How many times have you done an investigation and you find attacker activity and you're like, man, I want to see similar activity to this, right? That's what we're going to do here. And then what's neat about that is you can quickly answer questions like, well, okay, for the data I have, what's the time range that this type of activity has been going on for, right? 
All right, so quick demo disclaimer before we jump into it. I know you've heard this a lot, but this is sending data to OpenAI uh, for these kind of proof of concept tools. Uh, so be careful when you use it and play with it. I don't recommend using it on your client data, um, but there's open source data sets you can use it on. There's ways around that, um, but I'll leave that for you to figure out. Um, anyways, yeah, standard disclaimer here. All right, we're gonna jump into the Jupyter Notebook demo real quick. This is a little bit of what we're about to see. What's our output goals here? I want to be able to take commands that have been executed on a system, and I want to review those commands by groups, what we call clusters, okay? Because each cluster is going to all consist of similar activity. And then I want to assess those clusters for risky activity so that I can view the most risky commands at the get-go. All right, so output should look something like this, where we have a column that tells us what cluster we're looking at, a risk score associated with said cluster, and then a description of that cluster. Uh, just as much, I want to look at any of those clusters in depth and see what command lines are associated with that cluster. All right, let's get started. So when you go to this notebook, you're first going to import a bunch of libraries. Yes, this is gonna get technical. It's a lightning talk and you walk out of here with this. So please go home and play with it or don't even wait until you're home, up to you. You're gonna see here things like we're importing a DB scan. That's our clustering class. Um, and then PCA, our principal component analysis, we'll also use here. So two imports, I'll talk about, that's it. But the first thing we need is you got to give this thing your OpenAI token, and then you need to tell it where you have a bunch of EVTX files, your event logs. Once we do that, we say, okay, how do I want to transform that data? What format do I want it in? Well, I want data to come out of my event logs and I just want a timestamp, a computer, a provider, and an event ID and a command line. We then create a filter and we say, hey, skip all of the events that don't have a command line in it, okay? And then we create kind of this uh, custom class that's going to parse all of it into a data frame for us. So that's it. That's how easy it is to go from, you know, hundreds of event logs down to a small data set inside of a data frame. You can see right there, you've got a timestamp, a computer provider. And if you take a, a quick look at that data frame, that's what you, what you see, all right? So if we take a look at all of those, we have like a little over almost 1500 commands that we found executed on the system. Um, and then we have out of that a unique, about a thousand unique commands ran. All right, so we create this open AI client. We're gonna create this function that gets us embeddings for each command line. We're gonna use async here. And asynchronous is really important. If you're gonna do uh, development with these, against these APIs, use asynchronous functions because it's going to fetch this data really fast. So we say, hey, create a bunch of tasks that we're gonna feed at our command lines. And then we're gonna execute this all at the same time. The semaphore there um, that you see, it's just saying, hey, never execute more than 25 at any given time because otherwise you might hit, um, hit throttling limits or something like that. But it doesn't really matter because in the end, what you get back is a data frame that gives you commands and embeddings. So what does an embedding look like? It's just a bunch of numbers. <laughs> In fact, if you zoom out, it's going to look something like this, right? And so that's the fun ML side of it, right? Just tons of numbers. But these numbers represent the essence of that command line, which is really cool. Because what that means is you can now cluster all of these commands by similarity. Remember, Jess was up here earlier this morning talking about how important similarity is. That's what we're going to do here. So we're going to use this DB scan clustering algorithm, we're going to feed it our vectors of data that represents the essence of a command. And in the end, we get 119 clusters, 119 groups of data. So we just went from over a thousand command lines executed on a system down to 119 groups. 119 things is a lot easier to analyze than over a thousand things, right? 
So we're already making progress here. If we can say, hey, show me how many commands I have in each cluster. So if you look over in one far corner, you might see like cluster 114 has three commands in it. Um, cluster one has 36 commands in it. Cool. All right. So these are our groups of similar commands being ran. You could say something like, okay, show me cluster 79. What's in cluster 79? Here you have a bunch of wind pwnage uh, script that's running. You notice here, all of these commands are different, but they're all grouped together by similarity. So if I see attacker activity and I see one execution, I can say, hey, show me similar activity. And now I see these executions, these elevates, these UACs, subcommands of win pwnage. That's pretty cool because it's all in one spot right there for me. All right. So what if we wanted to view how these relations look? We can say, hey, use uh, PCA to convert these down, go from a thousand dimensions into three dimensions. Great, three lines of code, you just did some crazy math. That's awesome. All right, a function that lets you cluster this data, I'm gonna skip, because uh, short on time. Um, all right, so this is what that looks like. Now, if I take all of those big numbers to use PCA, convert them down to three numbers, now I could graph this in a three-dimensional view. And this is what it looks like if we took the essence of each command and kind of had them all sorted by similarity. So you could say, hey, this purple group there on the bottom, it's cluster 30, what are those commands? Well, it's a bunch of SVC host commands, but pretty cool. So now you can see how far those stand out compared to all of the other commands. All right, so then what we wanna do is we wanna iterate each cluster and we want to ask an LLM. This is where we bring in our chat GPT. Um, we wanna ask it, hey, iterate each cluster of commands at max, give it 10 sample commands and tell me about that cluster. Is it risky? What are those commands doing? Because remember everything in that cluster is together because of similarity. So we create a function to do just that it's going to send requests off to OpenAI. Um, it's going to, because of how we craft our prompt, it's gonna return data in JSON form. So we kind of create a function to clean up that JSON. It doesn't always come back as clean as you would like. So that's what this is. And then we execute all of those tasks like we did before with the embeddings at one time. And this, this goes pretty quick. Um, and now what we get back is a data frame that gives us the risk associated with a cluster. And that's really cool because again, let's back up, went from a thousand commands down to a hundred clusters, a hundred groups, and then we fed those samples of a hundred groups to ChatGPT and it said, hey, these ones are risky. All right, so take all that data, throw it into a workbook, Congratulations, you made it. Now this is what the end product is. So you can go home today, run this notebook, and this is what you're going to get out of it. Hey, I have these clusters, I'm gonna sort by risk score. And now at the very top of this, it's saying, hey, these are all of the different types of activity that were grouped by similarity. And these are the ones you should look at first. Um, again, you can go to any cluster, filter that in another tab, and you're gonna see what commands comprised that cluster. All right, so you're also gonna get a Rust tool. This Rust tool basically does the same thing. What's cool about all of this AI ML stuff is that there is no correct way to do these things, right? So you can pass in different parameters to your clustering algorithm. You could get better results. You could get worse results. There is no go-to thing. So using this command line, you can tweak that. This is a demo of this tool. So literally, I'm just going to clone the...